What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Dave. I am a photographer from the Bay Area of California. I mostly shoot on the Leica M system and this channel is all about photography and creative philosophy. Now this video may seem a little fast and perhaps even a touch unnecessary because I just did a video back in the fall all about the kit that I was carrying around back then. You can watch that video right above. It's just better to watch this one because here we are at the beginning of 2024 and this is what I'm using today. Gear is one of the number one questions I am asked about pretty often. My thoughts on gear or what I'm using or what lens I use for this or, you know, various gear questions. I'm going to do my best to answer as many of those questions as possible preemptively and share with you the gear that I'm using these days. So without talking on the front end for 20 minutes, let's go ahead and talk about what's in my bag. Okay, so to start off, let's talk about the bag. My kind of like every day going out for a local shoot bag is the Ona Brixton bag. I bought this used off a incredible photographer in San Francisco. This bag is kind of the perfect size to carry the amount of stuff I like to carry while not being too heavy or too bulky. So this is the bag and we are going to load this bag like we're loading out for a local or regional shoot. Inside the bag, I don't use Ona's dividers. I use these Peak Design dividers instead because I just feel like they're a little better and also I like that I can fold the top down because rangefinder lenses are pretty small and I can sometimes stack two in a slot or put a lens on the bottom and film on the top. So I love this bag and these dividers for that reason. So the flagship camera in my bag is the Leica M11. This camera really is a perfect fit for me. And honestly, the M10 and M10R, great, great, incredible cameras. But what set this apart so much is the fact that the meter is just like so freaking accurate and good. And I also love huge megapixels. I think it's awesome to have diversity in cropping. And the kind of stuff I do, having that flexibility is great. So this is my M11 on this is a clever supply split ring strap. Uh, I've had the strap for a while. It's aging beautifully. Really like it a lot. This combo is like perfect. It balances well. It's comfortable and it looks great. So we'll stick the M11 in first. Next up is my film camera, my Leica M6. I typically carry the M6 along on nearly every shoot. I really love shooting film and digital side by side. It actually is very educational that way. And if you visit my website, my shop, Very Good Presets, link is below. Most of those presets that I made, at least the ones that are film stocks, are based on me shooting side by side and just matching my raw files to the film look. And I've been a colorist is that a word uh, I've, I've been color grading photos for a very long time since honestly pre Lightroom I had Apple aperture I don't know if you guys remember that one but being able to shoot side by side is fun and using the same lenses and then color grading to match is how we make presets and so I think it's been wonderful so the Leica N6 my film camera and the strap on here is also a clever supply code. It's the Joe Greer short strap. I got this because I, I was walking around. I remember sharing it recently. You can watch that video like right there. I, I'm learning how to point on camera. It's this side. You can watch that video about how I banged my 50 Sumo Lux because I was double strapping on my shoulders with two different straps. This, I've been using it lately because it hangs right here. The M11 hangs below it and there's nothing on the side that's going to crash into anything. Been really nice. Let's put the M6 in the bag. Hey, let's hit pause for just a minute. I've got three things I want to share with you. Won't take you but more than a minute. The first thing is that if you are watching this video and you like this kind of stuff, or maybe you've seen my videos before, but you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and join the community here. I really try to engage with everybody that engages with me, whether it's in DMs or comments, and I want to build actual community around this channel. So be sure to subscribe and follow along. Thank you so much. The second thing is I just recently launched a Patreon as a way to support this channel, but I did it as my company, Very Good Presets, which at this point continues to blow my mind every single day with how much support you guys give that business. The Patreon 
Patreon will give you early access to my presets before I release them. And when they do release, you get them. You don't have to buy them separately. They're included in your Patreon membership. So be sure to check that link below and learn about the Patreon community. There are two levels. One gives you early access. The other one gives you early access and a monthly Zoom call where we will all get together, talk about color grading, look at each other's photos. It'll be a lot of fun. So be sure to hit that link below and check out the Patreon. And the third thing is that I am so stoked to be putting together a Bay Area photography workshop. I don't have all the details for it yet, but there is a link below where you can sign up to get information when I have all those details together. I've got kind of a sample itinerary of what that looks like. I mean, this is a world-class destination, the San Francisco Bay, and there's so much around here that just is incredible for photography. And I'd be so honored and excited to be able to show you this whole area, talk about photography, share with you some of the things that I've learned along the way, both technically and also culturally and philosophically. The Bay Area Workshop will be awesome. It'll be this summer. Link is below. Now let's keep talking about the things that are in my bag. The number one lens that I roll with is the 35 Sumalux. It is not the close focus version. It's the FLE version before that. This is on my M11, I would say probably 90% of the time. Next, if we're going through the focal lengths, I have the 50 Sumalux, and this is the close focus version. I like to be able to get in tight with a 50 with 61 megapixels and get a lot of textures. I think that's really cool and really fun. Both the 35 Sumalux and the 50 Sumalux have a ton of character to them. They are not clinical lenses, but they are very sharp. They just have a lot of character. They have a they have a lot the like a look, if you want to call it that. The 35 I said is 90%. The 50 and the 35 are basically on my MC and M11 all the time. So those two together between the M6 and the M11, swapping them back and forth, that's definitely a 90%. I've talked about this lens a little bit on this channel. This is the 90 Sumerit. I just wanted something that had some compression and was able to punch in, but I don't shoot this focal length a ton, so I didn't want to get like, you know, something expensive or an Apo or anything like that. The Sumerit lenses are super affordable. They're crazy sharp. They don't have a ton of character. I would compare them to like a Sony GM lens and the way it renders. It's a great lens. I like it a lot and it gets the job done. Now the two lenses I have recently picked up, this one I talked about in my last video, you can watch it right there. Remember, I'm learning to point still, bear with me. This is the five centimeter or 50 millimeter like a Sumatar. This lens dates back to the late 30s through the mid 50s. Very classic lens. It was originally made for the Leica screw mount before the M system was created. But I threw a little adapter on here that makes it into an M lens, though dangerous on a digital camera because it is a pop out lens. And so because it pops out and pops back in, you have to put it in the out position to shoot with it. But if you accidentally push it back in, you can damage your sensor by by cramming this ring into it and we would never want to do that so I think it's a dangerous lens I never keep it on the camera when I'm not shooting I especially never have it right in the bag attached to a camera that would be super dumb and then recently I picked up a Leica 28 Summicron a spherical this is not an incredibly expensive lens either this is not the newest one or the one before that this is the one that they made kind of right in the transition between film and digital. I think it has a lot of character and I don't shoot 28 a ton either. This is kind of just for like if I wanted like nice wide landscape. See, I, I sold my Q2. That was featured in the last video, but I don't have that camera anymore. So I wanted a 28 to replace when I wanted something kind of wide on the M system. And this is getting the job done for that. So I've got the Leica 28 Summicronic Spherical and that rides along in the bag as well. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all those things. I try to reply to every single comment or DM or anything you interact with me. I'm gonna try to give it back to you as well and interact with you. So thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.